Hey, it's Daisha D. And it's Jay Stan. Welcome back to In Retrospect Podcast, where we look beyond the surface to find understanding. Bring you laughs, knowledge, and culture. So sit back, relax, and join the convo. Today we're going to be joined by some very esteemed guests. We're going to let them introduce themselves, let you guys know what they got going on. Listen closely, you might miss something. My dog said, we are steamed. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> nah, what up, Put that reverence on my name. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I like it. I like it. Nah, this is Junie, though. Uh, those of you know, those of you don't. Glad to be on the show again. Um, got my beloved wife to be in this thing with me. So I'll let her introduce yeah, herself. <laughs> hey, my name is Shania. Um, with my soon-to-be husband. This is my first time on the show, but I'm excited. Before we just jump straight into the main topic, we're going to do our segment called Let's Unpack This, where either you guys send in your questions or we dig deep into the foolishness that is celebrity news. Justin, what is... Yeah, so uh, this week we're going to be getting into... uh, I know a lot of you have seen it on the internet. A lot of debates have been had. Some people may feel a certain type of way about it, but what I'm talking about specifically is 50 Cent, his eldest son, I believe. I don't know if 50 Cent does have a lot of kids, but I believe it's his eldest son, says that (laughs) his eldest son says that $6,700 a month in child support was not enough for him and his mother to survive on. Now, some folks may agree, some folks may disagree. Ah. I know how I feel about it. I'm just curious to know about what are your what is everyone's thoughts on this? Is sixty seven hundred dollars a month or is it too little? How old is Marquise? Hey, that's what I'm trying to figure out. Damn near thirty. <laughs> Let me see. So, so who's the child support supposed to be for if he's thirty? He's not. He's younger than us. He's that. not actually thirty. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I said damn near 30. Hell, he looked 40 if you look at the pictures. <laughs> 6700 That's 6700 a month, depending mm-hmm. on where you're living at after taxes and all that stuff. That's that's close to six figures. It ain't six figures. It's, it's close. Right, 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 right. Mm-hmm. So anyway. <laughs> If you can't live off almost six figures, I mean, you're doing something wrong. You uh, you ain't living right. That's that's my personal opinion. I done lived off a lot less. <laughs> so I'm a social worker um, with a background in DSS, and I can say if I were to walk into a house and offer almost seven grand, that would change a lot of families' lives. Uh, that would change my life to have <laughs> seven grand. <laughs> In, uh, a month, uh, but I also think that in in these kind of tax brackets, you get used to a certain lifestyle. Mm-hmm. So when that lifestyle is taken away, you don't know how to live like the common folk anymore. So I guess in his mentality, he's probably thinking that seven thousand dollars ain't ain't anything. But from where I sit and from what I see on my pay stubs, that's plenty. Yeah, for sure. Um, as a fellow social worker, I agree with <laughs> Shania wholeheartedly. Um, but also, I think he might be comparing himself to other celebrity kids mm-hmm. and seeing what they get, you know, because I'm sure that's who's in that's the circles that he run in, runs in. So he Look might get a Charleston coming out of you. He run in. <laughs> <laughs> he runs in. So I, I don't know. Like, I think it's that comparison thing, but. And also, I don't know what the cost of living is in New York. That's true. That's another thing to think about because 6,700 could get you very very far in the South. But up North, I don't know. I don't know. I haven't ever lived there. So I don't know what that could possibly do for him. But if he isn't working and he's getting free money, I'm going to need you to make that work. Like, does he sit even live in New York at this point? No, he live in Texas, but I mean, nonetheless, even though he's paying that sixty, even though he's pay, you know he's paying that sixty seven hundred dollars a month in child support. My whole thing is is like, essentially, you getting a head start on potentially bringing additional income into the house along with that. 
And I understand from the perspective of what he was trying to say a little bit at the end was saying that that's not enough for his mother to enjoy herself, this, that, and the third. But at the same time, I was just like, that's your mother's the one handling the money, allegedly. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, you supposed to enjoy all that and let your mother handle the household since she's, you know, receiving the funds for whatever for you. But today, he also posted today in regards to the uh, 6700 he said, uh, he said, since y'all think $6,700 is so much money, someone tell my pops I will pay him $6,700 for just 24 hours of his time so we can do everything I ever wanted to do with him as a kid. Red, yellow, green, whatever color he liked. Well, I'd be heartbroken if my son said something like that. <laughs> you know, I don't mean to laugh. Too much. This Curtis right. Jackson we talking about, though, he's petty. That's fat. That's fat. That boy said be, red, yellow, green. Thoughts. I be, uh, obviously, I'm not well versed on the rules of child support, but uh, if he if he's 26, how is this a child support conversation still? I don't think I think that's what he's calling it. Typically, child support stops at 18, or it stops when you're finished with uh, college. So I don't think he's in college, and he's well beyond 18. So I think it's just like a this my daddy and he gives me money, you know, like a monthly uh, uh check, you know. Well, he complained about an allowance then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he seemed dramatic. He seemed like the drama queen, like cause 6,700 and now he talking about I do anything yeah. to get the time back with my daddy. Come on. I know, I know it's 50 cent, but come on. I mean, I mean, they sound like they could use a family therapy session, to be honest with you. I mean, he's literally saying that he doesn't want the money. He wants his time. And maybe he didn't get that time because 50 Cent is who he is. He's constantly working. Or he didn't get that time because 50 Cent feels like, well, I'm supporting you financially. So I'm doing my job as a father. You, you making a lot of faces. And as we all know, money is not enough to raise a child shout out to nick cannon so i don't know i think they he's just throwing it. shots let hey let that man live man my goodness he bring a whole nother man into the conversation like, yeah, nick cannon. I just say, <laughs> I just say. who next let me stop don't i'm not gonna answer that don't answer that uh tonight what are your thoughts tonight what are your thoughts on that whole situation with him you know basically calling for his father you know I feel like now that he's gotten such backlash about it, I feel like at this point it's trying to backtrack and cover up what he said initially. I don't doubt that he probably wanted to spend time with his daddy, but I'm not sure if that was the driving motive of him saying that $6,700 wasn't enough to take care of him and his mom. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, that's respectable. I just you know, that's that's just... I feel like at that point you just asking for attention. Like, cause he know how to get in touch with his daddy at 26 years old. So if uh like the time was actually the issue or whatever, like come on, Instagram was not the place to to go to say I'd do anything to spend some time with my daddy if that's actually what you wanted. I feel like what he wanted was some attention. So yeah. He was trying to, yeah, and I agree. In my opinion, it was like he tried to badmouth his father, even though they might have their differences. If you got differences, in my opinion is you need to handle that stuff off the internet, off of social media, try to hash that out. But then he got that backlash, and he'd be like, oh, my daddy. I want to spend time with my daddy. Do you do you really want to spend time with your daddy? Is that really what it is? If that's the case, you need to be trying to handle that off camera. I honestly I, believe him. I hate to say it. I, I like. I believe him that he wants to spend time with him, and yeah, that time and money. Really right. I'm just saying, like, clearly they don't have a healthy relationship because they don't communicate offline. Fifty Cent has said stuff to him as well online, and he the daddy. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just saying. I think that that's why I said they need a good, good old family therapy session. I don't know, man. I don't know if they could do it. You saw on, on Power, he killed his own son when he was playing a character. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, don't, I just don't know. But hey, I'm just saying. Hey, I don't even I'm know just saying. Y'all think that would do any good, though, at this point? Like, 
if they actually, yeah, if they actually did sit down and hash it out, like y'all really think that would solve anything? Yeah, so I, I don't think, think so. Therapy, yeah. Can, yeah, can fix anything. Well, not anything, but I think that having that safe space of the sanctity of this room to finally hash out this twenty-six year relationship. I mean, I don't think it's going to be harmful. To be a little vulnerable, but I'm not going to go into too much detail. Two weeks ago, I had my first family session with my father, and I'm 27. And um, I mean, obviously, it took 27 years for us to get to this point. So you can't solve all of that in a one hour session. But we definitely touched on some things that we have never spoken of. And it felt safe because you have somebody who's unbiased. So I'm an advocate for go to therapy. And if your parents are willing to go with you, please take them along with you. That's dope. That's dope. Oh. <laughs> Speaking of rappers, Diddy, Puffy, whatever else you want to call him, he did an interview on The Breakfast Club, and they kind of brought up his relationship with uh, Carisha. Er, young Miami, same person? That's okay. correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they asked her, I asked him, you know, why is it that you have such a hard time with relationships? And his response was, man, I'm a Scorpio with money. <laughs> um, <laughs> that was his exact response. And then Charlemagne said to him, well, Chris Rock said that a man is only as loyal or as faithful as his options. And did he pretty much agreed with that? Um, what, like, do y'all think that that's the case? Is a man only as faithful as his options? A man is only as faithful as his options. Yes. See, I'm so so first off, I hate when dudes or people in general <laughs> just try to, try to like categorize all men into a you man pontificate, June. You tell them or because <laughs> there's definitely dudes out there that would fit that category. Like, he only gonna show love or respect based on the type of girl that he's with, but that's like not the overwhelming majority of men, in my opinion. So I mean, it's, that's a hard one to, like, give a yes or no, because, like, I don't know. We talking about a dude like Diddy who who has anything that money can buy and all the monetary stuff that really doesn't mean nothing in the grand scheme of things. But the type of women that he might go after, I mean, that might be the game they play where they only is faithful as what they have to offer. But in the, like, as far as, like, actual <laughs> everyday folks, like, you know, I don't, I don't feel like that's an accurate statement for like all oh, men, but it's a lot. It's a lot of them out there for sure, for sure. Oh yeah, me yeah, word. So um, uh, <laughs> um, I, I mean, I will say this before I do give my answer is that uh, a lot of folks with money, uh, when they start, people see them acting a certain way, be like, oh, you changed, you did this, or you acting like this. That person's always been there. They just got money. So everything you're seeing is just on a more enhanced or heightened level of how they're acting. That's always been there. They've always been that person. That's nothing new. And as far as the, like the options goes, um, I feel like uh, if, you got, if you got it like that, you always had it like that. Money's not going to change what kind of person you are when it comes to like your options being it, all this. The way I, what I'm trying to say is this. Is that if you won't be a, a <laughs> man of character, you respond. <laughs> nobody even said that oh, yet. Hold on, man. Exactly. I, I said a whole bunch of nothing to get to my point, but I'm just laying the foundation to get to where I need to go. And what I'm saying is, if you already were a person that had a bunch of options, you've already, you know, you've already been doing all of that. Essentially, now my whole thing is this: if you're already a person of character, you know, you only like to be strictly dealing with one person at a time. You're always gonna be like that, regardless if you got money. Now, a lot of people might think that's what they want because that's what they hear or see. But essentially, it's all the person. It's never like this whole con perception of, oh, he got all this money. He dealing with every woman imaginable. Because now you hear a lot of people with money now saying it's hard for them to even trust being around certain women in general and vice versa with women dealing with men because they got money. Um, I just So I don't really, I don't I, agree with the options. I don't I, agree with it. I disagree. I do think that there's a lot of men and women, I guess, but there's a lot of men who didn't have a lot of options. Then they got money and now they do. Prime example, Flavor Flav. 
Do we really <laughs> think that he had hundreds and hundreds of options until he? Of course he did, options? man. Flav had options. You're not gonna. Hey, Flavor Flav is a Charleston legend. We're not gonna do this, Nation. We is not gonna do this. First of all, let's go back in time. All right, rewind. Not gonna talk about Flavor like that. You really think? You really think that all those women who came on Flavor of Love came there for the love of Flav? Really? Absolutely not. Thank you. (laughs) Come on now, Flavor. Flav, you know, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Okay, but Flavor Flav is not someone that we would say is traditionally attractive. He's not. Just because he's not your speed, Daisha, you can't be coming off of. You can't come at the flavor. (laughs) He has money. He then got options. I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah, flavor hurt, but um, (laughs) (laughs) but but, uh, I feel like it's a second half to this to this conversation, though, because like, and I'm I'm definitely not on like Diddy's side with this or nothing like that, but. We got to acknowledge the fact that Carisha, Miami, whoever we want to call her, has made a whole career, you know. Yeah, with, go ahead. With, with lyrics that that point out. Glorify. The fact that only messing with dudes that bring a certain amount of whatever X, Y, Z to the table. So, like, and I referenced it as like a game earlier. So if that's the game that she playing, then Diddy saying something like, <laughs> Did he say something like um game on, let's play all that is, is, is faithful as his options? It's almost like that's kind of the game that she she signed up for, in a sense. Again, I don't agree with it, but like that's her whole MO. Like we can't talk about Diddy like oh uh, he's a, that was such a dumb statement and not acknowledge the fact that I mean that's that's her entire MO. That he has willing participants. Oh, Chris Rock actually made that statement. Okay. That a man okay. is only as faithful as his options. And he did cheat on his wife. So I guess that's why he said that. They should. They should. I'm these are these are all <laughs> facts. He cheated on his wife. Uh, I'm just saying. What I know, I know you did. He also, he also uh yeah, you seen the movie too, Chris Rock was in. Uh what was it? Uh it was uh it was a movie based on him cheating on his wife. But yeah, anyway. I, I love my wife. Yeah, it was something like that. Yeah, that's kind of sick. The only movie I acknowledge with Chris Rock in it is uh, New Jack City. Oh, I thought you were about to say Longest Yard, but anyway. Uh, <laughs> where Justin said uh, that he thinks it's a character thing, I can agree to that. I do think that people who are serial cheaters, that is a character flaw. It's something that you can work on potentially, but it is a character flaw. So if you're a cheater, you're going to be a cheater whether, whether you're broke or rich. It doesn't really matter. So that part I can agree with. And that's okay. Are. That's all. That's all I needed. I didn't need you to agree with the whole thing. I just needed a piece. <laughs> and you, are, and you are only going to be as faithful as your options because you might like Tisha today and tomorrow you might like Sarah. Who knows? Mm-hmm. Um, Tisha and Sarah. <laughs> what? All right, now nah, I see what you did. Don't do that. <laughs> Moving along. So according, <laughs> according to the CDC, there is a divorce every forty-two seconds. Okay. So we saw Tia Mori and Corey Hardrick are getting divorced after like 22 years together. Um, well, Miguel and hit and I can't say her name, but his wife are getting divorced after 10 plus years. Well, Neo and Christina <laughs> Renee are getting divorced. Um, well, is marriage still the goal for people? Like, I mean, what's what's going on? Because ever since COVID, it's spiked. So. And marriage with the candidates all together. So. Say that COVID brought a lot of the a lot of things that were going on in folks' household to the light. Reason being is folks had no choice but to be around each other and actually get to know one another. A lot of folks <laughs> thought they knew who they were marrying <laughs> and didn't realize that hmm, this isn't who I thought you were. <laughs> and that was exposed to a lot of households during COVID specifically. That's why we saw the 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 divorce rate, everything shoot up. And me personally, I know we've all been in the workforce to a certain extent and have heard people talk about their significant other and thought to themselves like, "Hey, you really hate to go home. <laughs> right. How you don't like when you sleep? What is wrong? 
why, why would you do that to yourself? <laughs> like, you become concerned for them to go home and in your mind like i've got nothing to do with it but it just it blows your mind to think that you could really put yourself in a position where you're with somebody or whomever that you don't want to be around when you go home in any capacity yeah that person might get on your nerves yeah they might do this that and the third but you saying some stuff that makes you really think like yeah you might need to yeah that's not good like that's not it uh but as far as marriage being the goal i mean everybody's perspective is different i fully understand that you do have folks that want to get married you do have folks that don't ever want to get married but want to have kids and do all that i'm not knocking everybody's perspective but me personally yes marriage is the end game the goal for me personally speaking for justin marriage is 100 percent always been <laughs> the goal for for me um just because i go i mean i go a little deeper with it uh just because I, I really care about like the black family you know what i mean so not to like steer it in that direction but you good marriage is like a really integral part in my opinion for like uh boosting the black family the black community really getting us to where we want to be. That's one aspect of it, right? But from a relationship standpoint, I really hate that. And it seems like it's our generation. I don't know. I could just be biased because we're in it. No, dog. It's it been around now. You know them old folk been doing what they've been doing. Anyway, yeah, finish. I'm sorry. But it, but it feels like our generation is really carrying the torch with the whole I marriage is just a concept i don't really need to be married i just want to uh date go with the vibes be with somebody i like yada 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 and i'm like so against that it makes no sense because it's like i i just i'm real uh purposeful in like everything that i do and uh, i feel like people in general should be that way like everything you do should make sense with with anything like driving eating whatever uh so i don't see why anybody would be like in a relationship making those types of moves having kids whatever without a plan or a purpose so um like i usually i'd be like yeah i can see different people's point of view on this i i can't even see the other side of this for real like mm -hmm. Marriage. And it's a beautiful thing. Like it's just like an exciting thing. I think the problem with a lot of people is they uh it's the person. It's it's the it's the personnel that they're dealing with. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. you talk you kind of talked about like people in the workforce that aren't happy to go home and kind of uh clearly aren't excited about their their family at home or whatever. And I couldn't imagine that. I couldn't imagine starting a family, you know what I'm saying, getting married to somebody or whatever, and then down the road being like, dang, I really regret that. Now I'm finna regret it for the every day of my life until I decide to get, that's silly to me. And I feel like you can vet that. Like you can you can do a better job dating. You can do a better job um, looking for red flags. You can do a better job putting boundaries in place. It should, there's no reason for you to get to the end of the road and be like, uh, yeah, I, I don't. That messed that job up. <laughs> yeah, like that's that's crazy to me. So for me, yeah, it's always gonna go one hundred percent. Okay. Um, my thoughts. Marriage is always my goal, and I let that be known pretty early on. I, I'm not just gonna be hanging out doing this for thirty years, and then <laughs> yeah. And yeah. together, and then when you're somewhere in the hospital, which is his social work side, but if something happens to him, I don't have any say on it because there's no documentation that states I'm his point of contact because I'm just the girlfriend that's been around for 30 years. Damn, but <laughs> <laughs> that exists. Hey, though. hey no, that's a real. That's a real life. Like situation she's describing. Yeah. Somebody being bunked up in the hospital and having no say so for the person they care about. And they bunked up. I'm sorry, I'm gonna stop saying bunk up. But anyway, Shania, continue, please. 
But in the same breath, I think it's also fair to say we probably all know people that should not be anybody's wife or husband or partner just because they the idea of what marriage is and who you are to a partner just does not align. And in the same breath, we also know people that shouldn't be parents. And I think you have to be very mindful when you make that decision to be with somebody. Like when COVID hit, the thought of people walking around saying, I've got to get out of this house because I can't seem to be around him. And they've got three kids together. Like how, how do you, how does that happen? How do you get to that point? But I don't know. I feel like the idea of marriage has changed. And I feel like in this generation, we're trying so hard to redefine what marriage is that it's almost erasing the even wanting to be married at all. Because what the marriage is that they saw coming up, they're so against being that person that they don't want to be married at all. Yeah. I, I think the wildest thing I heard, I'll just put this real quick before we pass it to Daisha, is that I was I was at work one time during COVID and a guy literally said, Oh boy, I gotta get off. I gotta get to the house and I gotta get gone. My wife get off. I said, What? Mm -hmm. So you gotta get off, go home, get your stuff, and leave before your wife gets home from work. All right. Any, I'm sorry. I just had to say that was the wildest. I was like, bro, what? It's crazy. <laughs> I, mean, I think that goes into what they were saying, though. Like, how do you marry somebody that you don't even like? I, I don't understand that. I feel like I do want to get married, but I am afraid of divorce at the same time. That's why I would like, no, I'm going to marry somebody who is my friend first. Because at the end of the day, that's what they should be. That, that should be your best friend. Um, and if not, then it's kind of like, well, you know, what are we doing? Um, just chilling. <laughs> um, just chilling. Now, I can understand people who do not want to get married for different reasons. They may not have seen healthy marriages in their life. I have friends for that. Re like, I have friends who have only seen very unhealthy marriages. So they just, they don't want that. Um, or I have people who have been married already and they're divorced and they're like, I'm good. I, I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to do that again. So I get it. It's not my preference. I feel like life would be a lot easier with a partner. Even as something as big as like buying a house, one of my coworkers, she is currently deemed single right on paper. And she was trying to buy a house in Atlanta. And they told her that she needed to make 75 K by herself in order for her to even think about getting a house. Um, and she said that experience alone was very humbling. And she was like, all right, I need to readjust the way that I'm thinking about certain things, so. Yeah, that, and that's like, that's one of the things I was kind of trying not to like steer the combo that way, but like, that's one of the things I was trying to get at. Like, there's so much that you, it, it almost doesn't make sense for, a group of people who've been so like marginalized and oppressed and put back in society to go out of their way to try to find ways to not build the community back up. And by community, I just mean family in general. Mm -hmm. so like something as simple as buying a house. Like why would we not want to make a bond that'll make it easier to give the kids that we know we gonna have a better life, or you know, uh, while we not uh, do what needs to be done to live comfortably, you know, like why would you not want to have two incomes instead of one? I mean, and that's a real materialistic way to think about it. But I mean, there is that side of marriage, in my opinion, that matters. Um, <laughs> I think because a lot of people have too many distractions um, to even get to the point where they can A, be in a serious relationship and then even get married. Because if you have friends around you who don't really value a healthy relationship, like let's forget marriage. They don't even value a healthy relationship. They're not going to give you good advice on how to make it work with the person you're with. They try. They want you to be their wingman or wingwoman. Um yeah. So I, I think you have to align yourself with people who have similar values as you in order for you to even get to that that point, honestly. 
True. Yeah, and nobody's telling you to go cold turkey, stop talking to the people you yeah, no, no, deal no. with completely. But it comes a certain extent that you got to realize that you can't have <clears throat> certain conversations with everybody or what's what's the uh the, the the thing that everybody will say is that you are the company that you keep. I'm probably saying it really chopped up really bad or whatnot. Yeah. So uh like if you have certain ideals and you have certain people around you that don't have the same ideas as you do or ideals at some point or another that's going to start to either you're going to class with them or you're going to start taking on some of those ideas that you see them do not you know consciously but subconsciously you'll start doing stuff and you'll be like hold up all right i'm contradicting everything that i actually believe in and sometimes it's hard for people to step back and reflect but you got to be aware and i think that's where you know a lot of folks and I and I can admit it myself. I've fallen short in that aspect, or not, you know, paying attention, not realizing that that's not what I'm. That's not me. I don't believe in that. And I got to step back. You got to reflect, and you got to change and switch it up. It's not saying to get rid of them folks. It's just saying that you can't, you can't partake in all those activities with folks like that all the time. So, out of curiosity, last question: Would marriage be easier if we were all just polygamous, or did polyandry? And polyandry is a woman with multiple husbands, by the way. That's dead. Ain't no way in hell. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't no way in hell. Come on now. I, I mean, you know, everybody my else tests get, the new way. My, my tests already get heavy if I'm dealing with a woman and she call herself, oh, I, I, I want to go and I'm going to talk to a bunch of other people while I'm talking to you. You know what I'm saying? Especially if you already had that conversation conversation saying you exclusive, it's just me and you, but you going and still talking to other people and then you find out about it, my tests already heavy already. So mm -hmm. you mean to tell me if I, if, if I got a wife Hey, she talking about, oh, I'm going to go get this other man, and I'm going to sleep with you today, tonight, and I'm going to go sleep with my other husband tomorrow. Oh, no, that shit dead. <laughs> that shit is dead. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I know. Pass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't want to, I don't want to, you know, rag on nobody culture or nothing like that. So polygamy is what it is, but. Uh, it doesn't work for yeah. us. Nah, that's it's not for me, neither. It's, <laughs> it's not my taste. That's super. You know, that might be a refined taste, but that's not for me. <laughs> no. Yeah, no, I it doesn't work for me either. And it, and anytime that someone tells me that they are a polygamist, I always ask them because it's always the people who suck at being a partner to one person. Like they suck at monogamy, <laughs> but you want to have multiple partners. Make that make sense. Like that. But even, go ahead. But even then, though, it's like you call yourself having multiple partners. You got to understand. You're going to treat one better than you treat the other. That's my point. You, no you matter how hard you try. Is a partner. Is you it like relig affiliated with religion? Like, I don't know if, or has that more changed to where it's just a... Most of the people who have said it to me or I've seen say it is not religious. It's not religion-based. It's just... I can't stay, idea based. I can't stay faithful to this one person. <laughs> so let me just explore. No, you know? My yeah. mind, yeah. my mind is telling me to do this. I know your yeah, eye. Maybe we need to have a, a polygamist uh, on the show so we can talk to them and figure out, you know, where does that come from? But you know. that'd be a wild show, Lord Jesus. Yeah, I, don't I don't know if I've ever met a polygamist. It's almost crazy to even fathom that somebody would would do that so i i'd have to hear from an actual like polygamist but if it ain't like a religious thing or whatever because i ain't gonna write nobody religion but if it ain't like a cultural whatever no that's silly that's that's really that's really silly yeah well thank you junie and shania for joining us for this very interesting conversation sure. uh we enjoyed having y'all i have been daisha d and i've been jay Stane. Join us every Friday at noon. And always remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Make sure I go watch some episodes. Don't play with me. <laughs>